Welcome back to Grade 8 Geography, Unit Number 1, Global Settlement, Patterns and Sustainability. This is Lesson Number 8. How does settlement affect the environment? Before we start today's lesson, let's take some time to consider the following. If you lived 1,000 years ago, what would your community be like? Would it be large or small? Would the air and the water be clean or would they be polluted? Why don't you guys put this video on pause so you can take some time to come up with an answer to these two questions because we will discuss these at the start of tomorrow's class. If you had lived 1,000 years ago, you probably would have lived in a small community. Your settlement would have had little effect on the environment. Today, however, settlement affects the environment in many ways. As our population continues to grow, there is a greater demand for water, food, and resources such as electricity and a sewage system. In both rural and urban areas, these demands put major stress on the air, water, and soil. Our demands also lead to different types of pollution. Cities are producing so much artificial light that scientists have created the term light pollution. Light pollution can change the behavior of animals, whether they live on land, in the air, or under the sea. Lights from skyscrapers cause disorientation for birds, and this is why we hear about so many birds crashing into windows of tall buildings. Something else I've heard some people complain about, living in a big city, you've got so much artificial light being created, you don't have any natural light coming from the stars. You don't see stars at night in a big city, and this is something which has actually affected the number of people saying that they actually feel depressed by the absence of stars in the sky late at night. Not surprisingly, air pollution is increasing as cities continue to grow. It should also be no surprise that cities create more pollution than rural settlements, since there are less people living on farms and in villages. Pollutants things that contaminate the air, land, and water, tend to be concentrated in urban areas, meaning that people who live in the most populated areas are breathing in the dirtiest air. What may be surprising is that high-density cities sometimes produce less pollution per person than some rural areas or less populated cities. This is because families living in rural areas drive more in order to reach destinations that are far away from home. In some high-density cities, families walk, bike, carpool, or use public transit to get to work and school. As cities grow, they need larger supplies of clean air. Cities also have to deal with a high amount of waste that the residents create. Wastewater has to be cleaned before it returns to any waterways and garbage must be disposed of in a way that does not harm the waterways or the land. And just looking ahead to grade eight science, you guys are going to be doing a whole unit on water with a big focus on treatment of water. So when you get to that unit, please, uh, think of lessons like uh, this one that uh, you're viewing the video for today. Unfortunately, not all cities are able to ensure that the waterways and the land are not polluted. They may not have enough money. They may have poor infrastructure. That's the basic equipment that a city or country needs to function well. Untreated sewage is a major cause of water pollution. 
As more people move into cities with poor water treatment facilities, the problem of water pollution will continue to grow. Landfill sites are places where garbage is buried under the soil. The landfill sites in many cities are full and it is becoming increasingly difficult to find new places where garbage can be stored safely. Of course, many items which are in the garbage that is buried in the landfill site contain pollutants which only lead to soil and water pollution. Even the oceans are affected since waterways near landfill sites carry polluted water. As we learned last year, forests absorb and store carbon. This reduces carbon dioxide emissions which cause global warming. Urbanization can have different effects on the survival of forests. In some cities, people use less wood for fuel and heat, meaning that fewer trees are being cut down. In other cities, however, more people buy and use a larger amount of animal products, meat and dairy items, in order to have more available animal products, more farmland needs to be created in order to raise more animals. Often, new farmland is created by cutting down entire forests, as you can see in this diagram here. Growing populations and urbanization are also leading to the loss of arable land. That's land that can be used for farming. As more and more people grow crops and raise livestock, more soil is being overused. Eventually, soil that is used too much loses all of its nutrients. The soil dries up and blows away, leading to the creation of desert land. As farmland turns to desert land, farmers have to move to new areas to find work outside of farming. This leads to added growth of already large urban populations. In fact, you can see even at the just outside uh, the main city itself, there are people who will try some farming activities on land uh, which clearly is not suited uh, for agriculture. When people build new structures or use the land for industry, that land is no longer available for farming. As well, it makes surrounding lands less fertile. To fight the loss of arable land, people in cities are trying to produce more food locally by growing crops in backyards, in parks, and even on rooftops. And a picture like this should actually be familiar to those of you who were with me for grade 7 geography when we were learning about uh, green roofs. Um, farms, or not farms, but rather uh, gardens, which are literally created on a rooftop. As cities grow, more animals lose their habitats. When their habitats are destroyed, animals have to move or face death. Many animal and plant species are dying out because they are unable to move or adapt to the changes in the places they used to call home. Urban planners are aware of this issue, and many urban planners are creating parks to provide habitat for wildlife. Okay, so we're going to finish off this video with a true or false activity. Let me just get this box out of the way. So what you're going to do is you're going to read each statement and determine whether it's true or false. If you're not confident in completing this activity right now, I do want you to go back and watch this video at least two more times. And then when you're ready, put the video on pause and try out this true or false activity. 
and we will take this up during tomorrow's class. But for now, this concludes today's video.